Oh, hello, Morgan. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Rook. <sighs> I'm wondering how long these are gonna... These adventures are gonna go. Yes, they were blasting through, ending almost everything in, like, the first turn. But today we're playing a lot of our slower champions, so this should be interesting. Hello, Rivi. Gotta love joining Game Slap with an ad. That's because we haven't add a we haven't run a ad yet. Yeah, the way Twitch works is before you if you don't have any ads, if you haven't run any in the past half an hour, then people get hit with a pre-roll. Hey, would you say you know a lot of the voice lines pretty well? Yes, but that being said, I still run into voice lines I've never heard before. So I know a good amount of them, but... Yeah, there's still new ones I've never heard, which is pretty impressive, to be honest. So today we're going to start off with our 5-star Morgana. Now for Morgana, other than the gemstones and the 6-star, we have everything. So, importantly, Spellslinger and Mana Flow, pretty nice. And then as far as bonus stars, this getting the Double Time Watch, the Ascendant, makes it a little bit more playable. Support champs have Focus and Crystal, can be pretty nice. Spells you acquire have Hand Sensor. I don't think this is honestly going to make that big of a deal. And stalled stop for having bonded bucklers. Can be okay, especially since this has overwhelm, but generally all the enemy units are going to be locked up by chains anyways. But with the five star, we can actually try a build I haven't done before on Morgana. So Swain's Raven Army and Packed Powder. So we get to play her round one. That could be really fun because we're going to have the five starting mana. Or we have the five stars, so we get the plus one starting mana. And then we're still going to go with Grand General's Counter Plan, just so we can get more of her champion spell every single round. This is what we'll be using today. Cool, I have one stuck in my head. I'm not sure who it's from. Devour them with an emphasis on uh, the your part. I kind of... It reminds me of maybe Kaisa and some of the the void units. Cause yeah, that's that does sound familiar. But actually it might be Evelyn. It might be Evelyn with her, her demons, potentially Vora. Could be something along those lines as well. Or no, it's a lease. No, that's what it is. It's a lease. Uh, it's a lease talking to her spiderlings. When you, I think, attack, when you declare your attack, uh, I think that is what happens. So yeah, pretty sure that's what's going on. Hello, reader. All right, so let's grab Morgana, and I think we're going to go and have fun in the Fizz 4.5 Nightmare. So we have Surging Tides. All players refill the spell mana and draw a spell if able. This should be pretty good. And you know what? Since we have sh Surging Tides, I think we'll actually get rid of the Grand General's Counter Plan and go for Echoing Spirit. That way we just have a much higher likelihood to get our Morgana. And then since we're drawing a spell every round, we should not run out of things to play. That's why you might want to go for Grand Challenge Counter Plan if you're going in other adventures, but this should be pretty good. So we'll go ahead and 
hop in here. Before we do though, we'll just drop a quick ad break so other people don't get hit by pre-rolls. So if you need to get a drink, go to the bathroom, go ahead and do that uh, now. They should make the Viego and Fiddle items available everywhere because at the moment it's just one unit having the new items. The Fiddle and Viego items. Not sure which items you mean exactly. Oh, I think I think you mean the new gatebreaker, the corrupted gatebreaker. That is one thing I noticed as well that only the um newer units, like only the ones in Fiddle 6 deck, yeah, has gotten got that item. Yeah, okay, now yeah, I get what you mean. All right, let's load in here while we wait for everyone to, to get out. Looked it up, she says, bind them. I remember Devour Them being a male tone in Shadow Isles Guy. Not sure, but I remember hearing it recently. I know it's in Path. Okay, when I, I was thinking a female voice. I mean, if it's a male voice, it's probably, yeah, it's Shadow Isles definitely makes sense. There's a lot of creepy Shadow Isles cards. All right, everyone should be back. Also, we are just doing times two speed at the moment because times four can get a little, little crazy, especially for the recording. So I think we'll try to stay on times two. And if it does feel a little bit too slow still, we might bump it up, but we'll start at here. Uh, let's go for a power, see what we can get. Credit cards cost one less, not bad. Out of the gates, summon a two cost. So that would be summoning our Startled Stomper, which isn't the worst. That's not that's not terrible. Created cards cost one less. That would mean our cards from our Shackles or our uh, Invoke. Those would cost less. Uh, could be OK. Sure, we can we can grab it. It's fine. And let's go for a crack shot Corsair. This actually, this should count also for our Morgana. Should make her cost less as well. As long as it's a version that is... Uh, let's get rid of Mystic. Uh, created by the Echoing Spirit. Yeah, so you see how these cost too. It's because Echoing Spirit created this, which makes it have that reduced cost. So let's drop our Morgana right away. Hopefully <laughs> they don't have something to try to kill her. And let's go right here and just immediately start the chains. All right, just go again. Yeah, I feel like we might need to increase the animation speed. It is still a little, a little slow sometimes. Well, it could be okay. All right, not too bad. Just get all the chains going. Enemy does not get to play the game. Yeah, I do think the Fizz adventure is going to be one of the best for uh, trying to grind out levels. All right, so she is almost leveled. Uh, let's go for Lee and Dolly here. There we go. Finally, I can see you live. Welcome. Glad you could make it. All right, let's go ahead and end here. All right, so almost enough damage. We could drop this here. Sure. Because we can use this at first speed. Make sure they can't block. GG. 
who's the strongest controlled path in path Yasuo Morgana at three stars uh, I would give it to Morgana but both of them are very very good uh, this is okay giving us some more draw can it help us end a little bit faster uh, that'll be okay let's see Lux Ezreal Ooh, Ezreal could be really good yeah let's go ahead and grab him and champion item, although Zap's Brayfin is pretty annoying, constantly stealing our spell mana. Let's actually go for the Kelp Maidens. Every time I had free time, you weren't live. But until then, your awesome videos help me. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Morgana definitely, but Yasuo trades some control for speed. Both are amazing. I love them both, but agree with Toast here. Yeah, like they're both really good. So just because I think one's better doesn't mean they're, the other one's bad. They're both really, really good. Uh, Shady. Shady Sakai. Thank you for the sub. Appreciate it. All right, this looks... Yep, looks good. All right, so this is one of the Morganas not created. Oh, well, it'll be okay. Um, sure, let's just drop this to quickly curse that. Yeah, we would like to try to get more kind of spell shield. There's some amount of protection. Um, how many cards do they have? They're at 10 cards, so we can't actually curse this unit more, which is a little bit sad. Um, I think let's actually try to pass and see if they play one of their cards. Okay, so they played one of their cards, but once again, they were able to give themselves uh, another card in hand. So I think let's kill this one. And yeah, we won't be able to curse the stone stacker, which is a little sad. And honestly, we'll just let it get a hit off. It's fine. We'll be able to heal back up won't really be a problem. Alright, let's drop this here. Uh, obliterate looks good. Alright, let's drop this here. It is nice that we do have a lot of stuns in our kit, so even when the enemy has too many units, it's honestly not too terrible. All right, let's drop our Ezreal. And let's drop this here. Ezreal and Morgana is actually a pretty great combo because they have the same level up condition. Just one's a little bit easier. Uh, we could do two damage here. Uh, they're already actually capped. Ah, I want to level up Morgana. I think this deck needs more stuns, to be honest. Interesting. With her champion spell, I feel like it's pretty solid. Alright, let's go ahead and drop this here. Alright, GG. Nice. I was joking. Okay, good. Because <laughs> you can high roll that celestial card with two stuns. Yeah, I was like, I've never really struggled with stuns. Guile's really nice. It's going to be free because our Spell Slinger. Nice way to both get some more stuns going as well as uh, targeting. Getting improving our Static Shock. Nice. All right, Squeaker.
yeah, well, actually, we'll be playing Five Star, Morgana, or not Morgana, Yasuo after this. So you can, if you're watching both, kind of compare what you think. This looks okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll just drop her right away. Could have, like, played our Solari Soldier if we wanted to be a little bit more careful, but... I love how much control we have. Uh, sure, let's go for Static Shock right here. Alright, let's hope we high roll and get another targeting. We did not. Sad. So they're going to be able to have one unit. One unit free. Alright, we'll still try to attack and get as much damage down. Oh, man. Yeah, the animation speed is quite nice because there's just so much going on with Morgana. Welcome, and there are just a lot of animations you have to wait for. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and drop this just to level up Morgana. And also, we're cursing so much, like, our units would both be absolutely massive here if we had the six star. All right, let's attack, try to end. Oof, that burst speed blocker. That sucks. Ah, sad. It would be really nice, actually, to be able to get the explosive finale with Morgana. It's so spammy. Like, we've been playing a bunch of cards this round, and we still are at full mana. She called me traitor. She scored me. Uh, yeah, this is okay. Alright, nice. This will be GG. And yeah, the enemy just pretty much can't even play the game. <laughs> GG. Uh, I don't know, though, Rally is more of a curse fodder. Uh, only as we can really counter Morgana, which is ironic. Yeah, Aurelia is a pain because she can still do her free attacks, even if she's a mobile, which is terrible. All right, Make It Rain will be really good because I can just target three units twice. It's going to give us tons of curses. Also, this will be able to level up our Morgana very quickly, as well as our Ezreal. Let's go here. Walp's not bad. I love how even with an ad blocker, fandom is so incredibly unusable and laggy, it takes forever to load and work. Just want to find who says one thing is so hard. Uh, also, so one fandom is absolutely terrible. Never use it. I refuse. Like anytime I try to go to a wiki and it's fandom, never do it. But there is a new league wiki. So uh, if you go to the, the Reddit, they should have it posted or pinned somewhere. But yeah, there's a new wiki. They left fandom because, yeah, fandom is just absolutely trash. Uh, let's go up here for the shop. Cards you draw cost one less. We just have so much cost reduction. We have Spell Slinger from Morgana. We have the created cards cost one less. Now we're having cards we draw cost one less. Uh, sounds good. Thermal Beam's not bad. But I don't think we really need the removal. Yeah, I think we're good. Uh, let's... We could do some rerolls for some more spells, but we've already gotten some really good spells. Uh, what do we want to cut? I actually like that at the moment. Honestly, we can just get rid of the soldier. <laughs> it's fine. All right, let's go for Bobby. Huh? You want me? Well, okay. Played the 5.5 star weekly with the Nora Relic. I did not, but that would actually be, yeah, pretty good because all your units would get impact. Yeah, pretty good. 
this is actually fine. Yeah, decisive maneuver is good to have. True shot being able to count down. Also not terrible. Starting off with Morgana is good. One cost Morgana. Uh, we'll drop this because we just want them to play something. So our Morgana can get a curse off. Uh, sure, let's drop this here. Ooh, crown guard. They might recall our Morgana. Poppy likes to do that a lot. Uh, I think... Yeah, we could go for a bunch more curses, but we don't want to necessarily use up all of our Morgana so, because they're probably going to recall her. So we can use up two here. They're also out of mana to, their, to do their recall. Yeah, the Invoke is actually so good. Like, there's so many cards that work super well for Morgana. Whoever did that upgrade, oh, it's fantastic. Alright, let's drop this here for the double targeting. Although, yeah, their hand is capped. All right, so, yep, they dropped a card. Um, I think let's actually stun this one because it will die from the, the shackles. Yeah, I suppose we can let that one live for now. All right, let's go for this Dark Binding, although they're still at 10 cards. Ah, uh, true shot. We could potentially attack and then rally. Or we'll just stack up this curse a little bit more. Yeah, we can drop this here. See what they decide to do. Okay, there it is. That's what we've been kind of waiting for this whole time. But that's also why we've been holding on to Morgana. You cannot break a shattered soul. I nice. Am your I am your truth. Well, there's another one. Uh, Yeah, we're not really going to be able to go for us. Oh, we haven't got our Nexus damage off yet. That is a little sad. So let's drop this here. That will get our Morgana down to a three cost. Looks pretty good. Astro Fiddle is nasty because Fiddle has a lot of attack drops. Yeah. Uh, let's drop this here. I have found such beauty and mortality. All right, so not terrible. Yeah, if we could... If we could get Explosive Finale, that would be fantastic. Alright, so we're potentially going to drop her, but let's try to lock up their Poppy. Be still. Yes, Mama is the beast, Mama. And we'll go for the Guile. <laughs> Again, we just don't want them to be able to play the game. Alright, they got rid of the curse, but they're st still stunned. GG. Ah, oh, fantastic. What's your build? I run the Beast Within, Loaded Dice, and Stack Deck. Oh, never mind, you don't have a 6 star yet. Yeah, this is just the, the 5 star. So I'm running... Uh, Swain Relic and Pack Powder for a turn one Morgana, and then I'm also going for uh, Echoing, specifically because we're going in the Ezreal Adventure, so we know we're going to get more uh, card draw. I think we'll go for Colossal Hammer. We should have, we shouldn't have problems drawing her. Um, Fury could potentially be good. Potentially when units die to curses that scales up Morgana. I actually kind of want to test that to see if that's how it works. I think it does, but I'm not 100% sure. Oh, when an ally dies, we normally don't have units die, at least not regularly. So Startled Stomper would be a 
Again, two costs. It's the second time we've seen this. It's okay. I think we could do better. Sharon is carrying you summon an ally, grants keyword to all other allies. Not that big of a deal yet. Like we do have we do have elusive and overwhelm. But could be good. Alright, let's go for spells. So tenor of terror. You really need to be unlucky card draw to lose with her. Morgana is so consistent. Yeah. You should let them die from around and affect more. I mean, that's normally how they're killing them. I don't really kill them any other way normally, unless I need to. Hello, jump. Looking through the list, I can't think of who it is. Was it a card? Maybe just leave it alone for now. I'm sure it'll pop up again eventually. Frustrated not being able to find the source of the line, but I get it. There's a lot in the game. Yeah. All right, let's. Yeah, we can we can hold of this. Now, the one bad thing here is that they have a lot of removal. So whoever we drop is probably going to die. So I think we might drop Ezreal. Maybe he can survive. All right, so we could drop this, and that would scale him up enough to survive. We won't get the targeting off, but I think let's try to go for it. I think again, let's just drop the shield vault here. We want them to play something before we drop our Morgana. Hopefully a unit. All right, yeah, still. All right, Morgana should be able to survive now. Okay, now they drop something. I think, actually, we'll, we'll grab the Mor another Morgana. I was gonna go for the decisive for the extra draw, but Having another backup Morgana couldn't be bad. We were hoping for the spell shield. Because, yeah, they just have so much removal. Alright, I don't necessarily want to immediately use both of our Morganas. Just in case they kill one of them. Alrighty. Yeah, the, the tenor can be pretty annoying to deal with. Okay, spell shield. Nice. Glad we have the animation speed, otherwise this could take a while. And yeah, we're almost out of cards. Oh, man. Hello, Shady. All right, let's drop this here, buff up Morgana, silence that unit. All right, nice. You know what we actually probably should have done? We probably should have given Ezreal uh, the far sight to make sure we get him. All right, we're trying to build out our board and give everyone elusive. All right, GG. Nice. How close are you to Heimer six star? I mean, I have him all the way. I have everything done in his constellation. I just need the actual six star, but don't really know how close that's going to be. Probably a while. Uh, Reap is really nice for the double targeting. Star Stomper is not bad for the elusive that we could give everyone, but... <sighs> double targeting is nice. But we already have a good amount of spells that do that. I think, yeah, we can actually go with the Star Stomper. 
All right, summon four units. Not terrible. Champion draw, not bad. This was also be targeting. But I think we'll go here. You're just being able to hit the board with four units could be pretty nice. Grifter's deck on Celestial Wonder. Sure, this could help us if we start to run out of cards like we kind of did that last game. That's not terrible. Bastion's not too bad. Spell Shield is nice. Does have draw on it. Sure, we can... We can grab that, and I think we're good. Some of these things are okay, but yeah, I think we're, I think we're fine. And let's go for Mirror Mage. Yeah. Earlier, Toast, you mentioned there is a voice line you didn't know. Did you know Thresh and Eve have interactions? I don't know offhand. I don't remember all the champions I do and don't know the interactions of. It's just in the moment when I hear it, I'll be like, oh, that's something I haven't heard. This is fine. Multiple Morganas, multiple cards with draw. Decent. Uh, something off topic. How does the Nova Shard and Constellation work? Do I need 100 to make a crystal? Yes, so you need 100 shards, and when that happens, you'll be able to... Um, the, a button will pop up. You can say, like, convert into Nova Crystal. Ended up getting Lilia's six star last night. So glad I did. She's my favorite one so far. Nice. Axe, Death Foil, and Stalkers. Fun. Does Pyromagic Wake consume the damage if the spell itself does not do damage? I mean, it still does damage regardless of if the spell does damage or not. Uh, let's drop our Morgana. I like that we go through their spell shield. Alright, we'll drop this here with them getting twice or double the amount of created cards or going off twice. Our spell shield's not going to do that much. I mean, they'll block the first one, but they'll still hit us. Uh, let's drop a Make It Rain to get more targeting down. Alright, let's see. Messenger, more draw. Not too bad. <laughs> oh, they play so many things. Alright, let's go for this Dark Binding. Not terrible. Alright, can we get lucky and get another targeting spell that's cheap enough for us to play? No. Almost. But no. Alright, we'll go ahead and pass. That's That's fine. Oh, that hush is nice. Alright, let's go ahead and hush that just so that they can't get their doubling effect anymore. Sure, we can drop the assembly line. Uh, sure, we can drop this here. And, yeah, this will completely fill out our board, but nice to get some more units. Oh, wait, are they full? They are full, so cursing is not really going to do too much. So I suppose we will pass. Uh, so many things we want to play, but since they're full on cards, there's not as much that we can do. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll drop this here because it's it's free and gets more targeting down. We kind of want them to play something. We want to be able to get a attack in on all of their units. That could be nice. All right, so we could buff up everyone a ton. They still, I hate how they're always stuck at 10 cards. It's so annoying. Uh, grant allies everywhere, sure. We're still gonna get blocked out, but. Do you like what you see? 
Alright, that's fine. Alright, they are at eight cards. Perfect. So we can lock up these two. They just have too many units. We're not really going to be able to get through, sadly. Yeah, if only we had Explosive Finale. Uh, we keep cursing their units and then just replace them with something else. Alright, so they are at nine cards. Let's go ahead and drop. Uh, we could kill that unit. Eh, I kind of don't care, though. They'll die to the curses, which will give us more nexus damage anyways. <laughs> I think the curses take up twice the amount of mana because of their mirror mage. Which is pretty awesome. All right, let's go here. I will fight with you. And I would never ask you to. And we can give that spell shield as well. All right, we'll be able to attack and end, but add drop. So we're just going to pause while we wait for anyone. Oh, uh, they got hit by that. I'm wondering about Fiddle's relics. Right now, I'm using Fear Cleaving Axe, Overwhelmed Ekrane, but I don't think it's the best free to play build on him. Yeah, I, I'm not sold on Fear Cleaving Axe. Like, it's... The problem is it's hard to get Fiddle on your board. And so while Fear Cleaving Axe can be good, there's some games you end before you ever see him, or by the time he hits the board, he's not going to get that many attacks in, so it's not going to help that much. So... I see the synergy in Fear Cleaving, I just don't necessarily think it's the best. And it's kind of the same with Echoing. Like, it maybe helps you get your fiddlesticks a little bit earlier, but his nightmares can clump up on specific cards. So still, all of his nightmares might all be stuck on, like, the bottom two cards of their deck. Yeah, I, it's not the best. Uh, Relic build is Swain and the Powder Monkey, Pack Powder. I think that's what it's called. And Echoing. Who's losing the AI? All right, let's go ahead and attack and hopefully end here. Morgana is definitely a lot. Like, she's already good. She's a lot better with the extra mana. And her four star, the Spell Slinger, still is pretty slow, though. Rocket Barrage isn't terrible. But I like it even more copies of more Morgana. This would summon an entire board of units. This would summon six. Uh, Dark Binding, this is off the top of our deck. Not terrible. But this is our last place to reroll. Doubling dice. Okay, like that. And what do we want to cut? I think we could potentially cut the true shot. It's not bad, but I feel like we have other cards that are actually better. Yeah, I think let's actually get rid of it. Let's go for a Fizz. Fizz will be a little bit of an issue since he can counter a lot of our spells, but Hush will be good. This is fine. Yes, they will play LOR on Steam Deck. Works great. Interesting. <laughs> See you, Rivi. Good luck trying to hunt down that voice line. I guess our targeting for Morgana will also be a pretty good counter. I have found such immortality. Right, let's go ahead and give her Spell Shield. And 
Okay, let's use these dark bindings, see if we get lucky. Feel my pain. Be still. Well, we got a little lucky. Uh, Crescent Strike, nice, more targeting. Alright, they are out of mana, which is nice. So, let's just get some more targeting going. Uh, we have one mana. Yeah, let's keep going, see if we can get any luckier. Guess not. All right, we'll drop our Solid Stomper. Alright, solid. Uh, that can be... fine, I suppose. Sure, let's go for the assembly line, try to build out our board. We'll go ahead and try to shackle that one. Be still. And yeah, every time we're getting these curses off, our entire board would be getting buffed up, which would be quite nice. All right, let's try to go for the make it rain, see if we can just target all their units. Uh, this is fine. Do not look away. All right, can we get lucky and end right here? It doesn't look like it. Maybe. Oh, perfect. All right. GG. I'm having a tie with who can obliterate more cards with not. Interesting. <laughs> Alright, Morgana with five stars, especially with the animation speed. Very nice. She's definitely still quite strong. But still pretty slow in the tougher challenges. Sadly, she does just have definitely a slower playstyle. The six star should help mitigate that greatly. Should help you end, honestly, like several rounds earlier than normal. So still very good, but still on the slower side, unfortunately. I was hoping with a build like this, we could speed it up a lot, but still dragged on a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and grab our Yasuo. There we go. All right, so for him, we have our Windblade we're going to go with. So plus one starting mana, so will be four starting mana with Yasuo. Very, very nice. And then second part, not really going to affect us too much, but when we recall an enemy, increases cost by two. Going for his Tempest Blade, his other relic, so that when he levels up, he stuns all enemies. And then Echoing to make sure we draw our Yasuo and get a bunch of his champion spell that are going to cost one less. This also has draw on it, and it is pretty excellent. So we're going to grab our Yasuo with his constellation, with pretty much all my champions. We have everything but the gemstones and the six star. So some notice bonuses, Dragon's Rage, this can help us scale up our Yasuo. Uh, Mana Flow helps us play our Yasuo turn one. Support champions have Everfrost is nice, and then uh, Blade Twirl having Warden Charm, very, very good. But then also, spells you acquire cost one less, decent. Alright, so we can grab this here, and uh, I think we'll go and try the Viego Adventure. Sure, let's go ahead and load in here.
All right, so two units, best defense. Not bad, can help us heal up our units, can help them be a little bit stronger. Vanguard Lookout would give us a couple blockers, so that's not terrible. Yeah, I think we will go for best defense. This can help our units not get too chipped down. Sure. All right, let's go for Spiderling. Yeah, I almost end Nightmares by turn three with six star. Yeah, with Morgana, yeah. It, it should help out a lot. All right, let's... Yeah, hold on to this. Looks pretty good. It will be nice with the Nightmares how we can drop our Yasuo turn one. And then we'll be able to have his champion spell ready for when they actually have their attack turn. Some things never dull. No All right, we will just pause. We want to have all the mana to play as many of our spells as possible. All right, so we only need to stun three people. So we're going to stun those with the higher health pools because we can get extra strikes on them. And let's actually try to stun this one as well. That way the Spiderling also dies. So yeah, let's just skip the block. So that one gets hit first, summons a Spiderling. Uh, this is pretty awesome. And then all these kills just scale up our Yasuo. So this is the like the main good thing about the Fury. Uh, sure, let's go for Blade Scout for just another unit. So we're, hmm, we're probably not going to be able to end here because they'll just be able to play a lot of units. So I think let's just attack and get as much damage down as possible. And we'll try to just end in our next attack turn. Uh, we could recall that, but it'll die next round anyways. Or I guess the other one will die. All right, that's fine. Uh, kill a unit. I mean, honestly, recalling him is going to do the same thing. Like, we have extra copies. These stats are just going to be lost, which will be sad. That's going to be the main issue. This adventure is just the fact that they have a lot of kill spells because it's Shadow Isles. All right, let's go ahead and drop this just to kill or get another kill off. And that way they only have... Oh, is it only on their attack turn? Yeah, it's only when they have the attack token. All right, not terrible. Oh, my word. All right. Yeah, this is kind of the problem with the control decks. Like, they're great, but they can just get shut down so easily as as far as ending quickly. Oh, well. Honestly, we'll just pass. Alright, now we'll actually play something. Another champion where having explosive finale would be really good. Alright, that's fine. Oh, finally. <laughs> finally, GG. Uh, who is the best four star? Ionia versus Fiddle. Um, for Ionia, you could go, it depends on your relic build, you could go for a three star Master Yi. And if you went for like Hidden Tome. Echoing Spirits, and I think you have to be chosen by the stars. If you went for those, you can do like crazy amounts of power and just end turn one, especially if you just get like a little lucky with powers. So honestly, Master, you wouldn't be bad, but if you don't end turn one, then you're probably going to lose because you're just going to add so many cards to your hand. He's going to obliterate your whole deck. Uh, but going for Yasuo is always also very good.
Are you using your uh, 200 XP relics to get the champions to 40? Uh, some of them. I did that with Volibear. Alright, so we could go for another stun. Could go for a very large unit, so... 7-7, seven, seven, kill an enemy. Not terrible. More stuns. Not bad. Hmm. Yeah, I think we will go for the shield vault. It'll be one mana. Yeah, it can be okay. Often I think the other unit is just going to end up killing or hitting a ephemeral and dying. If we weren't going to Shadow Isles, I probably would have chosen the other unit. Alright, Zed, not bad. Relatively cheap. Could be good on offense. Uh, Nar is a little bit more expensive, but his other cards are pretty cheap. But I always like Zed. I hope we get him as a champion soon. <laughs> sure, I think... Yeah, I think Zed can be pretty good. Alright, Spells Chest. Shop. I think we'll go for the shop. Try to get another fun power. And I think we'll actually stay away from Mist Wraith just because I know that they are going to have more ways to be annoying and shut down our attacks, whether they like burst speed summon a blocker or they have like their drain. I think it'll be easier to abuse the Bright Steel Protector. So let's go here. Can I beat the entire game with six star Oath Ari? Other than the monthly challenges, yes. The only issue you can't monthly challenges is you can only use her three times. This is okay, but let's actually get rid of the Shadow Assassin and the Steel Tempest so that we can try to get our three cost Overwhelm unit. Uh, Scarf Diego? Scraft Diego? Thank you for the follow. All right, so yeah, let's just drop our Yasuo unless, ooh. I was a little worried they were going to have single combat. I was like, that could be rough. Alright, so we only have three stuns, but we only need three stuns, so we'll pass. And we're trying to hit their high health units to get them a little bit lower, so that they're more likely to die. Honestly, yeah, his Steel Tempest is so good. And the fact that there's draw on it and is his champion spell, it's so good. Echoing is fantastic for Yasuo. Beautiful. Um... Sure, we can drop this for the impact. I think, again, we'll just try to attack and get some damage down. We don't have Overwhelm yet, so we can we can really struggle with getting shut down. Or attack shut down, at least. Um, sure, let's drop this here and kill that, because they're... Ephemeral is going to get the stun and kill. Well, I guess with the barrier, not quite. Not like it really matters. And yeah, we're really just focusing on building out our board. Because if they attack, we'll just use a Steel Tempest. Bye-bye. Yeah, Yasuo is pretty great. Uh, let's actually drop our Blade Twirler. This is one of our best cards. Like, other than Yasuo and Steel Tempest, it's probably the best card in our deck. GG. Yeah, I, I like Morgana. I like the fact that you can't let the enemy play the game, but Yasuo can just end so much better, or so much faster, and he actually has better removal. So I used to just purely favor Morgana, but I'm actually starting to like uh, Yasuo more and more. I think that's should go here. Not only is this going to stun a unit, but we can also draw a spell from it. Is Swain good at just three stars? I want to see how he is, but I'm focused on Ari. Swain is fantastic all the way through. 
I think he is the one champion I've had the most fun with playing consistently. Like every single game I play Swain is a blast. I can only think of a single game where he was bugged and he was getting like hard countered by the uh, Anivia. There's like only one game I haven't had fun playing him. Every other game I've had a blast playing him. He's really, really good. You want to get his four star because right next to it, there is the star of discovery that gives you pyromantic wake. So you want to get that if possible. But even without that, the entire time you're playing him, even level one, he is awesome. All right, shop. Windswept Hillock, not bad. So we could drop our Yasuo, get a stun off, get a stun whenever we get the attack token. Although, to be honest, we already... We don't actually need the round start stun as much. Eh. Let's... Okay. So in two exact copies of an ally, they are ephemeral. Since we just have it so our first spell of round costs nothing, this could be good. Yeah, let's go for Dawn and Dusk. We can maybe do the fun Zed play where we drop Zed and then get immediately three copies of them. All right, Kingpin, don't have the gold for it. Chamber of Renewal, yes. Especially because this shop, we don't have the money for it anymore either. So Chamber will be nice to get Spell Shield. All right, Remitter. I don't know, Heroic. He's definitely, Swain's definitely better with Relic Slots and with getting his Pyromantic Wake, but I think he's really, like, just his two-star, his two-star has so much power, and his first star also has a lot of power in it that just at two stars even, you are pretty great. Now, he does just scale and get better and better, but I think he is good all the way through. Let's actually get rid of a couple of these. We wouldn't mind getting more of our Yasuo. We want to get some more of the Steel Tempest. All right, so our first spell each round is free. So let's recall this to get for one another recall, but also them just having their big unit gone. Let's do an attack. All right, so we can drop this here, but it's not really going to matter that much because he's going to level up and just kill their entire board as soon as they attack. Alright, bye-bye. I do actually think with Epic Relics, Yasuo scales harder than Morgana. Like, this build just seems so insane for Yasuo. Uh, let's drop this here. No cure. Hello, Samurai. Welcome. I am having a pretty good day so far. Alright, let's try to get some damage down. Oh, yeah. Forgot to change the title. Oh, I was good for a while, but... This week, I have been struggling. There we go. Uh, we can get rid of that. Drop this here. Oh, it looks pretty good. Looking at recent characters, Swain and Viego are the best level 8 characters, even including those as far as Elise and Thresh. Yeah, Swain and Viego are pretty much the two best characters in the game, in my opinion. Uh, let's try to get rid of another blocker. 
and then that will die to our other round start effect. And so, hopefully, we can end. Alright, fantastic. What's your suggestion for the 6.5 Nightmare this week? All my champs struggle because of the shrooms. I mean, yeah, you just want to try to end as fast as possible. It's shrooms, and then is the other power the 1020, I think? 1020 unit? Um, Yeah, you pretty much just want whatever broken champion you can to try to end as soon as possible. So, like, if you have uh, Aurelian Soul, for me, I used six star Ash, which was actually a little, a little bit dicey. You want to try to stay away from any champions that have a lot of draw. Aesil is kind of, kind of the best. Another windswept hillock. Uh, recall each ally summon a living shadow. I think let's just get more blade twirlers. Yeah, Viego or Swain. Yeah, if you have a soul, it's probably your best bet. Middle six is close to being the best, but the fact that he's unreliant and his units struggle early creates the gap. Yeah, Fiddlesticks is very good, but I don't think he is as good as Swain or uh, Viego. He's definitely up there, though. All right, let's get Spell Shield for our Yasuo. What do we want to cut? Uh, we like our spells. We like most of our units. I think let's get rid of Shadow Fiend. And let's go for Fiora. Also important questions, are champion related epics are obtainable from gold chests or do I have to buy them? At the moment you need to buy them, we've been told that there's supposed to be a target farming system coming before the end of the year that will uh, help people get those relics as free to play, but that's not in the game yet. Champion specific relics, at the moment you can only buy them. Uh, let's, a lot of these are good. Well, let's kind of do some rerolls. We want to make sure we can get hopefully a couple copies of our Yasuo. All right, so let's use a Steel Tempest here to stun her again. All right, perfect. We got even more copies of our Yasuo. Oh yeah, we should be should be pretty good. We just need two stuns. So let's go here and here. And then I think we will set up to do our Dawn and Dusk with Yasuo next round. I think we'll bank the mana. Let's get a giant Yasuo. If they play a unit, we'll try to drop a uh, Will of Ionia to get rid of them. Because we just don't want them having... Ah! I didn't think the fact that both of those would also get strikes off. Oh, that's annoying. I was like, the first one will kill her, which he did, but then... Oh, the other two wanted to join in. Let's actually drop this here. Give our Yasuo another item. Just mushrooms. Oh, sad. Still, most of the health is gone. Any replacement for Yasuo's relic this build? Echoes the only epic I got till now. Uh, so, yeah, if you don't have the Yasuo one, 
having Seal Tempest is nice. Uh, Echoing is really good. Going for the Overwhelm isn't terrible. Uh, so if you don't have Beast Within, just going for Troll King's Crown, not bad. Yes, hopefully the enemy's always going to be stunned, but quite often they still have ways to get in your way. Uh, Spell Shield's honestly not terrible. Since you have Echoing, going for Grand Channel's Counterplan isn't necessarily the worst. Uh, yeah, Crown Guard can work as well. Yeah, the common stun one, the Frost something is also good. Uh, we can let that attack, it's fine. Yeah, Everfrost is a another good one. Grand General's Counter Plan isn't bad. Overwhelm or Challenger are both decent. I guess we'll see if they play anything. All right, there we go. All right, GG. The fact that he scales up so much with Fury now, I think Overwhelm might be the play. Yeah, Overwhelm is definitely a very good one because unlike Morgana, you don't have as many ways to just keep the enemy board controlled every single round. You have really good ways to stun specific targets and you have good targeted removal, but getting rid of everyone, Yasuo normally struggles with getting blocked out, so any Overwhelm on him is not bad. Also, it looks like add drops will just... Uh, pause and wait here. Oh. Closer Hammer won't be too bad. Although it shouldn't matter, honestly, too much. Oh man, it is... It's cold out, out, out today. It's really annoying that some epics are kind of mandatory for some champions within the scale up to endgame, 5 star plus adventure. Kind of limiting for free to play players like myself. I mean, for free to play players, ASOL is kind of the biggest help because you can't buy anything to do with ASOL. So being able to use him to clear the high adventures is kind of your key. Now, if you want to be able to clear high level adventures with a Pacific champion, then yeah, that can that can get a little bit limited. Uh, no, I did not see the LOR report tweet. Okay. So it just says Ambessa and Warwick are coming to Path of Champions. Big. Uh, one. Hey, everyone. Moment. All right, let's pull this up. So, okay, six minute video. Obviously spoilers, I guess. Uh, let's, yeah, let's see what I'm this Mark, is. I'm Mark, co-founder and chief product officer at Riot. And I'm Christian, co-creator and showrunner of Arcane. We've been working on Arcane for years and it's almost time to share the final season. Telling these stories has been an honor and we can't wait to see what you all think. Arcane's first season gave us an exciting opportunity to deepen the world of Runeterra through expanding on our storytelling, Fortiche's stunning animation, music, and a few Easter eggs for dedicated League fans. Season 2 will bring you even deeper into the world. Teams at Riot have worked closely together to try to make the launch of Arcane a moment that can be enjoyed across all of our games. Oh boy, hype. We're not going to spoil everything coming out, but we're going to give you a little glimpse into what's in store as we head into Arcane Season 2. Earlier this year, we announced Ambessa, making her the first character to go from Arcane to the Rift. 
When the Arcane team worked on her during season one, we were very excited by her speed, power, and domination, Oof. and couldn't wait to see how she'd play in League PC and Wild Rift. That said, Ambessa's presence will stretch beyond the Rift, as she'll also be playable in Legends of Runeterra's Path of Champions. And of course, she'll be a playable unit in Teamfight Tactics, but we'll let you theorycraft what her traits might be. Speaking of TFT, while Gizmos and Gadgets incorporated Arcane Season 1 through some traits and champions, the team's going all out on Arcane for their next set. You'll be able to fully immerse yourself in Season 2, from exclusive champions to mechanics to traits, cosmetics, and more. You'll hear more about all the exclusive Arcane characters and TFT's dev drop next month. We'll share one sneak peek for now. Powder will be making an appearance in this set. And if you haven't heard, 2XKO, our upcoming 2v2 fighting game, will keep the Arcane train rolling when it's released that in 2025. Sick. On November 11th, they will release an updated look for Jinx and 2XKO, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Sign up for playtests at play2xko.com for a chance to test out some of your Arcane favorites in a new way next year. In addition to Ambessa, Warwick will be coming to Path <laughs> of Champions, and both Warwick and Singed are receiving updates in Wild Rift, where they will be joined Best by be Heimerdinger, awesome. who's live today. Wait, is uh, Warwick an Arcane? Who knows? <laughs> anyway, we're also bringing... Um... Actually, let's save that one for later. And while playing Arcane characters on the Rift is cool, it'll be even cooler to play them on the Bridge of Progress in League's upcoming ARAM update. Oh. And of course, it'll have a bit of new gameplay thrown in for a little bit of extra fun. Talker's Trials will return to TFT in the first patch of the new set, giving new and returning players a way to learn the ropes in a low pressure environment, or grind for that high score. In Wild Rift, there will be an arcane themed mode called Showdown with unique items that you can purchase through in-game quests. And like we did for season one, we'll have story driven mini games for both League PC and for Wild Rift. Of course, you can continue to show your love for Arcane even after the finale. League is releasing a skin at a new tier, Exalted, for all you diehard Jinx oh. fans out there. Oh no. They'll also have other $10, season two skin. skins, including Arcane Brawler Vi, which may look familiar if you've seen the trailers, and a Jinx themed Nexus finisher. As for TFT, Chibi Caitlin is just one of the many new tacticians coming this set, along with new arenas that will transport you into the world of Arcane. Plus, I heard there might be a new cosmetic type on the way but you'll have to keep up with TFT for more news on that later. If you are more the of an FPS gamer, don't worry. Valorant has a brand new arcane-themed bundle Dre, on they're the coming for you. While the Sheriff was a season one exclusive, the premium content team cooked up something extra special for season two. That's all for our game updates for now. On behalf of all of us at Riot, we're so excited to celebrate season two with all of you, both in-game and out. And we can't wait to see what you all think of the show and everything else that we have coming. And in addition to everything going on across our games, we also have a ton of real-world arcane merch. Apparel from Uniqlo and Black Milk, collectibles from Funko and Tokidoki, makeup from Fenty Beauty, and tons of other exclusives across clothes, figures, music products, and more. It's all going to start rolling out as we get closer to the premiere on November 9th. And in the meantime, we've got a new series trailer for you, featuring our second single off of the soundtrack, Come Play by... Okay. I'm not going to watch the trailer. If you want to go see the trailer, go ahead and do it. Uh, yeah, I'm not looking at any trailers for season two. But Ambessa and Warwick, that is going to be cool. I mean, I'm, personally, I wasn't like she's a fine character. She fulfills her role well in uh, Arcane. I don't really like her too much. But yeah, that's that's just me. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how she plays. But Warwick is going to be hype. Because Warwick is awesome. He's a super cool character. I'm interested to see what they do with him. Because he looks like he's... Like, he has to be P and Z. But there's no real support package that seems like it would fit with him. So they're going to have to release some new cards with him. And... We're probably also getting like Victor or someone else as well. So probably next patch, we're probably gonna get like three champions. But yeah, Victor or not Victor, uh, Warwick. I hope they, I hope they do a good job with him because he's such a cool, badass character. Yeah, uh, but yeah, we will be getting Ambessa. She should be Noxus, which will be nice because I have a Noxus Nova Crystal ready to go. This this will be good. They did Warwick, so fine. She's sorry for being down bad here. 
Uh, I don't really care about the updates for League of Legends because I personally don't play that game anymore. But them advertising another skin and a new like tier of skin after they did the whole craziness of the Ari skin just seems crazy, like in not a good way. Also, it kind of makes me laugh that throughout this entire video, they're trying to be hyped, but I think they're also trying to have a somber tone because they know they just laid off a couple hundred people, I think. I think it was a couple hundred. Yeah, they laid off a bunch of people. And so they don't want it to be too hyped or too happy. So they're like trying to be like, hey, here's these cool new things coming, but they have to try to be a little bit more somber, which... Yeah, it's interesting timing for trying to do out, like, essentially what's a hype trailer without trying to be too hyped. What, you mean they laid people off? Uh, just like yesterday, they announced that they are laying off another, like, couple hundred people. Maybe we'll get Singed as one of Warwick's supporting cards. I mean, I think Singed has to be his own champion. Again, yes, again, another round of layoffs. I kind of doubt they laid off anyone from this game, <laughs> LOR, because I don't think there's anyone left to lay off without just, like, closing the entire game down. I mean, I could be wrong, though. I didn't look in a lot into it. I just heard about it uh, the other day. Got laid off my job 10 years recently, too. Still depressed about it. Yeah, it, it sucks. Layoffs are never good. All right, let's keep moving on. Uh, let's go for Colossal and Yasuo. Uh, let's go for a power here. Elemental winds won't really do much. Shield's not bad to give us some amount of sustain. Uh, easy prey would give us extra keywords on our Yasuo, which could potentially hit overwhelm. And well, we already have spell shield, but sure. Although we could try to reroll for like explosive finale, round start rally. We have four rerolls. Let's actually try to go for something a little bit. Yeah, let's go for a round start rally. That could be good. Smooth soloist. Yeah, 400 gold. Let's go for Evershade Stalker. Uh, and they announced the layoffs in a post saying, don't worry, we're evolving Lee. Yeah, they... They didn't frame it well. They're like, oh, we're updating the game. But it's really like, oh, yeah, we're laying off a whole bunch of people. Uh, Toast, do you think that Chosen of the Stars could be play on 6-star Yasuo instead of Tempest Blade? It's easy to read 10 attack. Regen could be nice to keep your Yasuo alive from pings. Overwhelm Challenger to maximize damage. Possibly. I think it would really depend on the adventure because a lot of times, like you're seeing in, throughout this adventure, the enemy has a massive board turn 2 and they are ready to hit you for a ton of damage. And normally you don't have enough stuns to just stun everyone with just your spells. You need to rely on your Tempest Blade to clear the board. And from then, you just have such a tempo advantage that anytime they play something, they can't like, they're going to really struggle to refill their board because you'll just be constantly killing everything with your stuns. So I think in specific adventures, you could potentially swap it out, but I don't think it's something you're really going to want to do all the time. Here, let's get rid of Will and Yone. We like our Yasuo, like having our Zed. We'd like more copies of Yasuo. Although Blade Twirler is also nice. Especially because we could play her immediately. Yeah, let's drop this here. Death is like the wind, always by my side. Alright, so we'll let Yasuo get a attack in. And we'll be able to get a ton of stuns, so our Blade Twirler can do a ton of damage. Alright, we can drop our Zed as well, get another stun going. And then here we just have to wait for them to attack. All right, so we will stun their whole board. We'll just take some damage from the Grenadiers dying, but everything's going to be stunned. We're going to have a ton of power. We can then attack and get a bunch of damage down. This will be solid. Maybe I 
do have a future. No cure for fools. I do all right. No cure for fools. Alright, almost ending. But we'll be able to open attack before they can play anything. Nice. GG. Uh, I just remember they once said they have a list of champs they want to add to Path Champions. Seraphine was high up there. Mechanically, she would fit with recent releases from P and Z instead of six cost. Jace Heimer, she'd like two cost spells. I mean, yes, I think Seraphine could be really fun. I just really hope they don't add more P and Z champs other than like we have to get some with Arcane. So Victor, OK, with the Arcane update, I get it. Same with like Warwick should be a lot of fun. I really hope after the Arcane patch, we do not see another P and Z champ for a couple months. <laughs> Honestly, I find Yasuo's voice line so cringe. Eh, yeah, I, not, yeah. Uh, hey, Toast, do you happen to know all of the guaranteed ways to get epic relics off the top of your head? Uh, I know most of them. So you, I mean, pretty much you just want to get golden reliquaries. So you get those by completing several different adventures. Like there's a quest to defeat a relic soul that I think gives you one. You can get them from your... Uh, Legend levels. I think there's also a quest to defeat Lissandra that gives you one. Maybe a quest for uh, Swain. I don't remember if he has one or not, but I'm pretty sure Relian Soul does. I think Lissandra does. And then, yeah, it's mostly Legend levels and then your ones from your Emporium. Uh, Spicy, have you seen the Riot Arcane... Uh, yes, we just we just watched that a little while ago, although we didn't watch the end of it because we didn't want to see the trailer, but we saw that essentially they were going to be doing uh, Warwick and Ambessa, which honestly, I mean, we that was what the rumor has been for months now. Uh, let's go for Blade Twirler. So if we do have to play her or spend any mana, we get it back, but we should be able to play her for free. Uh, smooth Soloist. Titanic Wake, most of our units aren't going to count for that. Yeah, he's at 7, so he's not quite there. Still not bad, especially because we could maybe try to get him a little bit bigger. I th hmm. Chrono Break could be good to attack, rally, and attack again, especially because we could play it for free with our one spell we got. I think let's try one reroll since we have like three here. Look out, lurk, little bits of damage. We don't summon that many units. Frostbite, Emperor's Dias. Okay, evolution can be good. Sharon's Karen is nice, but let's go for the evolution. This shop that we're not gonna have money for, but that's fine. Yeah, I think we're good. Honored Lord. Yeah, let's go for Honored Lord. So Swift Wing Flight. Appreciate it, man. Happy to help. Uh, still, most rares are useless or even detrimental for champions they weren't designed for. On the other side, if they finish PNZ champs early, then we have a lot more <laughs> time for the next PNZ. It's okay. Victory will be Targon. <laughs> Reminiscent of the... <laughs> Victor Zoe PvP deck. Uh, all right, Dawn and Dusk. Nice. Let's get rid of Shield Vault. It's solid, but we have other things we would rather have. All right, let's drop our Yasuo. Right, our first spell is going to be free. Our other ones won't. I think we'll save Dawn and Dusk for later one blade, one purpose. yeah let's we can use this here
Oh, there's our blade twirler. We're going to try to drop this quick before... Oh, nice. They're not wanting to attack. I think let's actually do Dawn and Dusk for the Blade Twirler. Now look at the other hand. And then... They still could attack with their Challenger. One blade, one purpose. I think let's attack like this. Okay, yeah, so they're only blocking the people that don't... Have it. All right, we'll try to do a recall just to buff up some of these units a little bit more. If the journey doesn't get you the All right, so solid damage down, and then we'll just be able to attack again right here. Destiny waits. No cure, fools. I feel at least Mbessa is Noxus. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. GG. Uh, about golden reliquaries that give epic relics the only source for free to play bind them emporium ice witch fifth reward legend level 40 and 50 rewards i thought there was also one for defeating like i'm pretty sure there's one for defeating aurelian soul for the first time like i think there's a quest that the first time you defeat aurelian soul i guess you get a uh, full build so you don't get a golden reliquary but you get the epic relic for beating Aurelian Soul. Alright, double attack. Nice. Honored Lord, what can we get? Ah, uh, sure, let's go for Phage. I think we actually probably get rid of Shadow Assassin or Blast Cone. Yeah, Blast Cone's not going to matter that much. Let's go for Viego. No in this world can stop me. All right, not bad. All right, so we can drop our double Blade Twirler. This will be... Very nice. Drop our Yasuo. And then I think we'll save the Dawn and Dusk until our Blade Twirlers hit like a critical mass of damage. Uh, sure, let's drop this here. This will help their Viego level. But we won't be able to get there this round. No, they don't want to block with everyone. All right, so some solid damage down. Oh, we kind of want to wait for them to attack. We're probably not going to have the mana for Dawn and Dusk this round. We could just recall him, but we also want him to die. <laughs> But any of these other ones that we recall, we're not going to be able to have enough damage to kill them yet. Yeah, it's fine. We'll just recall him. The journey doesn't get you the first time. All right, this will be really, really good. Because we'll just be able to get this massive attack on, and that'll actually be game. All of our units have spell shield. They shouldn't be able to do anything to stop this. GG. Perfect. Still don't have a single five star. I'm not complaining. Yasuo will do all right. <laughs> yes. All right, Yasuo, still very solid, and kind of the more I play him, I think that he scales, especially with this build, actually a bit better than Morgana. 
Morgana's better at keeping everyone locked up permanently, so she is, still has more control than Yasuo, but Yasuo kind of has the control you need it when you need it, because you're able to just stun the units that are actually attacking. You have way more removal than, or more consistent removal than Morgana does. So while I normally give it to Morgana, I think, especially at like the five stars, I think Yasuo is actually better. Morgana is still just a little bit too slow. All right, let's go ahead and try out our Aatrox now. So he is another one that we got everything but his six star and the gemstones. And we need to test out to see if his star of discovery right here is actually bugged or not. So equipment you inquire and adventures have phage. This was not working previously. I've heard that it is working. I've heard from other people that it's not working. Uh, so we'll test this out and see if it is working or not. But got some really nice upgrades, especially the eight regen is pretty massive, and World Ender having six cost reduction. Also really big. Our units having more equipment, extra mana is nice. I haven't played Aatrox in a minute, but we're gonna try his like normal, very general solid build. So Beast Within is great, having Overwhelm is nice, and then most of your units have a subtype of either Darkin or Cultist, so they get the extra 1-1. And then with Starforged and Luminous, we get extra starting mana, so we'll start at four, which will be pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, I heard that it was fixed, and then I heard other people, I think, saying that it was broken as far as the Star of Discovery. But we'll go ahead and try Aatrox here. I think let's, again, go for the, the Fizz Adventure. It'd be nice to have a little bit of extra mana. Should be pretty fun. I can see that you are unlucky with crystals. But I have hundreds of crystals and no fragments. <laughs> uh, the Fade Star is working only for non-darkened weapons. I've opened a ticket to Riot, and they answered that it's still around and work in progress. Okay. Interesting. I really want six-star Aatrox. Do you think turn one Aatrox is the play with Swain Relic? That would be interesting, depending on how massive he is. Possibly. All right, first power... Two units is nice, but a unit every round is also pretty good. The quick attack and augment is good. We want to have units to be able to equip them right away. The little bodies can get kind of wasted later on because quite often our board is too full. Yeah, there's... Hmm. It is kind of interesting. I think we'll go for the little buddies, but there is actually a, a thought to be going for the uh, gearing up. But I think, we'll, I think we'll go for the unit every round. All right, crack shot Corsair. Uh, there's some dude on YouTube who has Aatrox six star. He use and he only uses turn one Aatrox. I mean, get Aatrox on the board right away would be good. This looks solid. A lot of our good uh, cards. Yeah, let's drop this and immediately equip that. Let's drop our Forsaken. I think let's go for Darken right here. And let's try to actually, well, we'd get two more Poros, but we wouldn't have the mana to equip them. At least not yet. Because yeah, both these are equipped. We could go for a Furious Wielder. I think let's just attack and get some damage down, some cost reduction going. Let's see what it hits. They both hit Furious Wielder. <laughs> okay. Um... Sure. We just want to try to get as many units on our board and equipped as we can. All right, four units equipped, round one. Pretty good. 
Uh, once again, let's just get another kill going. Try to hit our Aatrox. There we go. He's still, still shy. All right. GG. Nice. I wish someone would sit down for five minutes and move Aatrox's image back to how it once was. <laughs> yeah. Also, it looks like Ad's about to drop. If you need to go to the bathroom, get a drink, go ahead and do that. We'll wait for you to get back. <coughs> oh, goodness. Anytime I play Aatrox, I had no problem with Phage new weapons. Drafting your deck weapons doesn't upgrade them. Also, summoning Darken as a unit doesn't get Phage. So I won't get what the bug with him. It's been almost a year at this point. Yeah, it has been a long time that Aatrox has had the, the bug with his icon where it's only half of his face. So we don't actually really need to worry about our units because we're already getting so many Poros. Probably actually going to go for the Telstones, even just for the champion draw. Yeah, I'm kind of conflicted. I would like to get Eve to six stars, but I also think six star Aatrox would be pretty fun. Use my Nova Crystal on Swain or wait and see Ambessa. I don't have any six stars. I mean, you can wait. It's only going to be a couple weeks, but Swain is one of the best and most enjoyable champions in the game. So I'd probably just use it on him. All right, about 15 seconds and everyone should be back. The grinding starts. Empire above all. Ambessa will be unit heavy. Swain is spells heavy. Spell deck is more fun. Yeah, often. All right, right here. We're not really struggling for units, so I don't think we're going to go for either of these. Let's go for the Telstones, mainly for the champion draw. What's the best way to farm shards? Daily quests, I get. I guess. Yeah, just doing all of the daily quests, weekly quests, and then any adventure rewards you're missing out on. Since they just added like three adventures this patch, there's probably some adventures you can get rewards from. All right, support champion. Let's see what we can get. Uh, Victor, Nidalee, Rek'Sai... Not great. We would like someone with equipment. Let's try a reroll. Diego, Ari. Ari is cheap. Would be not terrible. Yeah, I don't think I want to reroll too much, so I think we'll just grab Ari. We were hoping to get like Jax or something like that. Uh, slot bot or item chest. Again, Zap Spray Fin is just annoying. Although, I mean, so is Kelp Maidens. Both annoying. But I think let's go here. Sixty-five monthlies get two platinum vaults is great too. Just defeated on Galio with Ari, because Galio killed my Ari, although I had enough power to kill him. Was that a bug or weird interaction between formidable and quick attack? Maybe? Not sure without actually seeing what happened. 32k RP for the new Jinx skins. I'm not sure how much that is in real money. Because it's been a while since I've bought RP. Uh, let's get rid of the Telstone since we have the Discord, I think. And let's, yeah, hold on to the rest. Alright, nice. We have Aatrox. Things go for... Well, Quick Attack is nice. Yeah, let's try to drop this here. And I think let's... Lay this just for some more units in order to... 
try to get some strikes off. I think we'll again go with the quick attack unit. Alright, solid. So, zero cost Ari, sure. And yeah, we'll pass right here. All right, let's buff up Ari so she can try to block any of their units. And you know what? We could just go ahead and kill their Kelp Maidens. Yeah, I think we're fine. Okay, that's also fine. Not hitting something too important. All right, let's drop our Aatrox here. Five cost Deathbringer. Uh, I think let's go for one more equipment. And then this will be game. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I think we're not really too much we can do. I'll... We should have put Ari at the end. We actually didn't want her recalling. <laughs> Uh, I think World Ender's pretty funny here. I think let's wait until we get our Dark and Aegis on the last unit. Well, I didn't realize that that still had his weapon on it, so that's actually a funny way to resummon him. Huh. Alright. Alright, let's use our Deathbringer sweep here. Ooh, that's that's juicy with the animation speed increase. I suppose we could have killed some of our own units, I think. Alright, hopefully GG this time. Yes. Uh, he got silenced by being turned into a, uh, not a Poro, mini-morph. He got mini-morphed. Uh, hey, Toast, which champ relic do you think can be used on a lot of champions from the shop? So, the Swain relic is really good on a lot of champions. It's definitely up there as one of the most versatile. And then Starforge is of obviously also very versatile useful on a lot of people most of the other ones that i'm thinking about are pretty niche where it's like you can use them on two to three maximum i think shock and awe is still pretty niche because you pretty much use it on misfortune and um uh, misfortune fiddlesticks and like maybe annie but even annie i don't think it's amazing I think Starforge and Swain Relic are definitely the two most versatile. Alright, so... Defector isn't terrible. Sure, we can grab that. Alright, Slotbot. I normally get two. And then Squeaker. It's really good on Annie and Jin. I don't think Jin has enough one-drops. Like, Annie, it can be good if you get lucky. I think it's definitely of the two of them more useful on Annie. I feel like Jin just doesn't get enough one drops to really make it worthwhile, unless you get lucky. Uh, let's get rid of the Blooming Cultist and the Steadfast Elkin. Hold on to the rest. He does, makes you get way more captive audiences. I mean, I'll have to actually try it out more. Well, that's sad. <sighs> Let's honestly just skip. Alright, the fact we got double darkened staff, though, is pretty good. I think we'll save and use this later when we have a little bit more units to spare. Although we could have more units to spare right now. <laughs> 
let's go ahead and drop this here. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Could go for Dancing Droplet. I, well, I guess we'll bank... We don't need to bank mana because we get our mana refilled every round anyways. Alright. Stall the damage down. So we're really struggling with our Aatrox getting cost reduction. <laughs> oh, well. Alright, once again, let's just... Keep getting strikes off. All right, let's drop our Ari. And I, I mean, we could go for Blooming Cultist. Sure, it's another elusive. It's going to be pretty big. That's fine. The Overwhelm and the, um. <laughs> Overwhelm and 1-1 and all of our units is quite nice. I think we'll still drop Aatrox. Nice to have him on the board. Even though we could just, like, attack. And let's attack like this. And GG. You need to activate Shock and Awe five times to make it better than one Riptide. Uh, it's a way more fun to play Jin. You need to activate Draft. You'll need to activate Draft for more one cost. Yeah. <laughs> I always see Secret Keeper appear from Portal... Uh, portals, but I've never once seen the champion he's supposedly to creating in your deck. Uh, I'm not sure about Secret Keeper offhand. Uh, yeah, Great Hammers, not bad. Also, we're seeing that this has the Phage icon. So yeah, people were saying that it, on non-Darken cards it's working. Great champions in your low deck. Yeah, I've never really played with that one or noticed it working one way or the other. Uh, chamber for spell shield. Not bad, but... <sighs> yeah, I think we'll focus more on our units. Parallel Convergence could be funny. <laughs> Zelani. Ally dies. Normally our board, board is going to be too full. Sure, Disarmed is okay. And sure, Parallel Convergence can be pretty fun. What do we want to cut? I think we can cut Homecoming. We normally don't want to recall our own units. And let's go for Poppy. Huh? You want me? Well, okay. Yeah, Aatrox is feeling really good, though, at just the, the five stars. Let's get rid of Dancing Droplet, and... I think we'll even get rid of the Tellstones. Yeah, since we have Ari, we have a good chance to draw Aatrox. Nice. So while we have better equipment, I think we're going to go... Hmm, I was going to say go for some of the cheaper stuff. But Noxine Defector, we could get both of those on the board. Sure. Oh, there goes that one. Alright, so this unit's gonna die. Still, it would be nice to get a strike off. Well, that's not the best. But at least Aatrox got hit for once. We are going to struggle with Aatrox getting recalled. But let's still try to drop him here. Yeah, kind of what I thought. Let's still go ahead and kill their Poppy. Let's drop this here. And let's 
lay this just for the champion draw, and we draw the wrong champion. <laughs> Solid. All right, so there's Aatrox, and we could play a bunch of units, which we probably should. Dropping Aatrox just for him to get immediately recalled would be <laughs> pretty bad. We're at 10 cards, though. Sure, let's drop our Ari. We'll drop this here. Okay, not a big deal. Alright, so we're really just wanting to equip as many units as possible. Alright, so everyone's equipped. All these poros. Getting some good damage down, but also getting a bunch of cost reduction. And sure, let's go for World Ender. This will give us Aatrox on the board. Yeah, Aatrox, especially with the extra mana, is feeling pretty great. Uh, I suppose we could actually just play this as another unit. Sure. Oh, hoo hoo. All right, let's go for a Parallel Convergence, and this should just end the game. GG. Secret Keeper, when I'm summoned, create the bottom of your deck uh, two random level champions that aren't in your hand, deck, or play. Yeah, I've seen that card before, but I've never really played with it much. Never really noticed if it was working or not. Uh, let's go for Aatrox. We can go for the Fury. Potentially get some good kills on him. Explosive Entrance isn't bad because we are summoning a lot of units. And we're kind of already drawing too many cards somewhat because we're drawing two and we're drawing a spell every single round. Sure, I think let's just... It's chip damage, but it'll be decent. Mind Meld... That lets us cut cards. I think we're okay. We can go for Tenor of Terror. Although Tenor has a ton of removal. <laughs> so this will be interesting. Let's get rid of the Defector. All the rest look pretty good. Yeah, whatever we play is probably going to die. I think let's actually open with Darkened Staff. Because, yeah, their damage is 6. If we played a single unit, they could have used this to kill two of our units. But dropping a unit like that makes it a little bit more survivable. We'll drop the Bakai, but he's probably about to die. Uh, we already have a good amount of equipment, so let's go for a Furious Wielder. Yep, not too surprising there. Let's try to drop this to maybe help him survive. Uh, we can drop Ari. And go for the Blood Letters. Alright. Not too bad, especially considering the adventure we're going in. Yeah, pretty good. Also streams are all my word. <laughs> Ah, uh, I'm done. <laughs> uh, yes, we watched the we watched the trailer. Well, we watched the first part. We didn't actually watch the trailer part of it. We can drop the blooming cult cultist. Man, still nothing for Aatrox, eh? Hmm. Alright, let's keep trying to equip. Yeah, I think we'll pass for now. I 
Uh, Alrighty. Let's try to get our Aatrox on the board. Alright, so good damage down. Oh, man. Alright, let's drop this, and then we'll use our World Ender. Although we can actually just... We can just summon a unit, and that'll end the game. <laughs> GG. Just change the title to Testing 5 and 6 Star Champs. We want to change it every 5 minutes. I mean, we're only doing, like, 3 champions, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, this being a two cost isn't great. Double attack's not bad. But I kind of like this. Uh, gold. Let's go for the shop here. Uh, no. Yes. And let's see. Ranger Knight Defector is pretty good. Yeah, it's worth getting. Something we can play for free. Has synergy with equipment. Let's go here for Mirror Mage. And let's get rid of the Elkin, but the rest of this looks fine. The we have our really, really good cards. And the fact we're getting pores at the start is excellent. Alright, let's quickly drop this. And I guess we can immediately play this 4 cost for free, because... Oh, all the mana we start with. Sure, let's... I was going to say get the scout attack off, but... I think let's use a Furious Wielder here, just so we can see what else gets cost reduced. We don't have any equipment for it, and I think it's going to die right away. Alright, pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's really nice. Alright, let's drop our Aatrox. And we can already use World Ender. Sure, just because I think it's also kind of hilarious. Even though we don't actually have that much equipment this time. Uh, we can get our scout attack off here. GG. The new Jinx skin will cost a max of 250 US dollars gotcha system, and the Nexus finisher will be 250 the league players here. Thank you for that context. Yeah, that's... <sighs> Riot must be... I feel like they must be struggling with how much they're laying people off. And then also how much they're trying to add... Like... Over-the-top monetization. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Phage here is decent, so sure. And let's see what we can get here. Double attack, man deposit. Man deposit is nice, but I think we'll go for the double attack. And what do we want to cut? Probably the dancing droplet. Sure. And fizz. What's absurd is that people keep... Uh, buy them if they keep adding those high price skins. Yeah, they... That's the thing. That's why they're doing it, is they know some people will buy it. Hello, Long. Uh, this is alright.
Uh, let's immediately drop this here. Alright, they are out of mana. Nice. Uh, I think let's go ahead and drop this here. And let's go for another Forsaken. We're actually getting lucky for once and hitting what we need. Alright, pretty good opening hand. Yeah, like some will die to the long tooth, but that is fine. Or they just don't want to block it at all. Also solid. All right, let's drop our Aatrox. All right, not too bad. Let's drop this here. All right, so let's go ahead and attack, and we can let this one die. But that'll probably be GG. Nice. Easy. Are there a new thing? Uh, they, they revealed a trailer for... Uh, Arcane, and they revealed the two new champion or two of the new champions we're going to be getting next patch. What's great about Arcane into Fizz, Starforge Gauntlets, uh, 2 1, 10 times XP gets him Titanic. And that spell mana plus draw makes him very OP. Yeah, that was that was intentional. All right, that was really good. The extra mana and all the extra stats you can get from some of the different equipment for Aatrox is really fantastic. Aatrox can be one that can struggle. He is a little bit more of what I normally call like a win more champion. If he's ahead, he feels fantastic and you just absolutely dominate the entire time. But if you ever fall behind, since you are so unit focused, you can just get countered really hard. So the fact that you have a whole bunch of stats to be able to make your units bigger, and then the fact that you get a lot of extra mana or can with potentially starting at four mana with the right build is really, really good. Once you get the six star, you get a lot of just massive units. Yeah, Aatrox is a pretty solid champion. Six star build, Raven, double plunder for turn one, Aatrox. Yeah, those sound pretty crazy. He's 16, 16, I think. Goodness. All right, pretty good. I think that's where we will uh, call it for today. We'll probably do some more runs tomorrow. Probably won't be doing anything on Friday, just working on getting everything done for the weekend. Probably do a lot of work on the guides. I would like to get Fiddlesticks guide done over the weekend. But thank you all for hanging out. Hopefully, uh, see you tomorrow. Hello, Void Picks. Sadly, you're just <laughs> uh, here right at the tail end. But yeah, thank you all for hanging out. Hope you have a great rest of the day, and hopefully see you tomorrow. See ya.